now I'm currently in a 3,000 square foot warehouse and we have a seven figure Amazon business. We have an eBay business and we have a Shopify store now, which was launched two weeks ago, which is uh, also doing, doing, doing well. And you think to yourself, but how do I not do this? Or how do I improve this? How do I use, how do I automate this? How do I you know, delegate this? And uh, out of the original four people who are picking packers, we have to get rid of three of them. Majority want to work with you and they want to do business. So just send those emails out. Um, start with emails. So you don't even have to call them for the start. Um, you can obviously on the, have the template. If they don't reply back, give them a call. Um, but yeah, just have the basics of like, I like, wish, why would they sell to you? Like, you're your business, you're reliable. I, I hope, you know, you and the, uh, all the girls in the team are, are doing well. You know, I do, I do miss some of these people, like Kaylee and Siobhan and, and Kylie. So uh, it's been a while since uh, chat, but I hope they're doing well. Today I am joined by a very special guest. We have Johnny Smith here, who's a, a, a fantastic member of our community, very successful entrepreneur. He's been doing this for many, many years at this point. Got a great um, Amazon FBA business. He's operating out of his own warehouse now. And we just wanted just to um, uh, just pick his brains, just provide as much value to you as possible if you're interested in anything Amazon FBA wholesale warehouses team building productivity there's going to be lots of amazing uh, conversation that we have here so thank you very much for um, being on the youtube channel johnny yeah it's been a long time coming it's uh, it's nice to be here and finally finally chat once you know i've known you for a number of years now so it's finally nice to be here yeah it's it's amazing to uh, have you as a special guest um we know we know you here uh, johnny as one of our warehouse legends <laughs> and uh, uh, therefore, it's amazing to um, to have you here. So for those that maybe don't know you, Johnny, do you want to just give a, a bit of a, um, a background story, uh, who Johnny is and uh, what you've been up to since you started? Yeah, sure. So I, I started before university and I was selling silk ties, uh, like flip flops uh, on eBay. Uh, I ran that sort of part time during university. It was never like proper branding or properly done, but, you know, it was a nice little side income. Uh, then I went off university, went to work in purchasing and business development uh, as a develop business development manager, uh, which was sort of the same sort of thing as Amazon, where you're sort of buying and uh, talking to different suppliers. Uh, I did that for four or five years and then sort of at the same time got into property a bit, which was started my sort of entrepreneurial journey uh, a little bit more. Uh, and then sort of three, four years ago, I went full time sort of Amazon. And now I'm currently in a 3000 square foot warehouse and we have a seven figure Amazon business. We have an eBay business and we have a Shopify store now, which was launched two weeks ago, which is uh, also doing, doing, doing well. So uh, yeah, multi-channel sort of e-commerce business now. And it's my full bread and butter. Yeah, it's my full thing now. Uh, I've kind of properties on the side now. So yeah. Um, Absolutely love it. It's uh, it's it's amazing to to see the the journey that you've been on, um, especially since you've had your own sort of Facebook group sharing your journey, uh, doing a more of these um, interviews where you're just sort of sharing your experiences. So uh, thank you very much for your time, first and foremost. I know it's uh, really busy when you've got the warehouse rocking and rolling. You've got team. You've got uh, so many things to manage. But um, I suppose just from a just straight off the the, the starting point, um, looking back on your last couple of years, since especially since you started your Amazon FBA, et cetera, what, what would you say has been maybe some of the biggest lessons that you've learned when you look back? If you was to say to Johnny four years ago, um, just something to do around maybe Amazon FBA product sourcing, et cetera, what, what would you say to yourself? Yeah, for me, and it's only because I've experienced it myself, uh, I think I've told you before how I was, I was suspended during Q4, which is when uh, the crazy Amazon sales start going. Uh, and I think just being more aware of Amazon compliance, I know it's a bit boring, but just understanding what Amazon will accept and what they won't accept. Because the main thing as us e-commerce sellers is we want to stay uh, keeping the Amazon like, account health uh, to the best state as we can and just not get suspended from the platform because then your business goes goes to a stop. So for me, it's just sort of learning the, the ropes and the basics a bit more at the start. Um, 
understanding it. Uh, I think also just sort of my jump into wholesale and going fully into wholesale really did change for me. Um, it complements my skill sets, uh, which is, you know, what I was doing for four or five years before, where I was sort of purchasing electronic components uh, from different sort of electronic wholesalers, essentially, uh, and then, you know, flipping them through a different way. So I've always been in sort of wholesale, just never for my own business. So essentially, yeah. Yeah, and I think, um, uh, you know, I've, I've had the pleasure of talking to some amazing people. And I think you're probably, I believe, one of the first people to ever uh, say that from a perspective of like, make sure that your, uh, your account is healthy, um, managing your account, the, making sure that you're aware of all notifications, the metrics that Amazon are, are tracking you by. And I, and I think that is such, such valuable advice because you, you will probably know this, Johnny, especially when you're getting started, you've got a million and one things to do. All you want to do is find products to sell. You want to just keep shipping into Amazon. You start seeing sales come into your business, which just feeds that motivation and the belief that it can be done. But what you, what, what you then don't want to do is like end up it all crashing down because you've maybe not had the processes in place to manage your account of, like effectively. Yeah, exactly. And you see the sort of money signs at the start, don't you? Uh, I actually remember one of my first products I flipped uh, and don't, uh, I don't recommend this, but it's actually, I'm wearing some Bose headsets and you can buy the replacement sort of uh, inside ear bits. Uh, so I used to buy it from Alibaba and then sell it on another brand's listing on Amazon. And it was just going crazy. And I saw the money coming in. Fortunately, I got away of it, but you know, if Amazon maybe looked back four years ago and sort of asked about that, then I don't know what I'd say. So yeah, you've got to like definitely keep compliant. Um, you know, especially for me, I've got 10 staff now, you know, people will pay for, uh, you know, in the warehouse space. So if, I, if my Amazon gets suspended, um, you know, I'll be very, very stressed. No, I, mean, <laughs> I, I, um, I experienced the same, Johnny, uh, not um, we, and it was a, the most strangest sort of suspension at the time we'd already quit the job. Uh, already in the first warehouse, had a member of the staff. Um, there's a lot of responsibility in your business at this point. And we were suspended for selling a conditioner that had an ingredient, cyrillic acid, which was a restricted product. Oh, wow. um, but that was a, although it was a really tough experience, and I'm sure yours was probably worse because it was at the height of Q4. Um, I, I remember for myself thinking, we, we ended up getting a, a notification uh, which was missed, like th maybe a week prior to the actual suspension. And I think that was one of the um, real case life scenarios of you've got to have systems and processes in place to, do, to, to manage your business. Because if you don't, it don't matter how big you are. I don't think Amazon have any, they don't, they don't care whether you're just starting or you're an eight figure business. They, they will suspend you. Oh, they don't care. They don't care. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, so you're now into wholesale. Um, mm. So you, you've you been obviously building your wholesale business for some time. You're very successful at it. Um, if, if there's somebody here that's maybe never sold wholesale um, sort of in their past and they're looking at, right, I want to just go straight in. They've maybe heard of retail arbitrage and online arbitrage, but they just want to go straight into the wholesale um, what would you say some of your, your best tips would be from that perspective? Um, it could be as simple as just having a Google Sheet template uh, with, a, with a sales pipeline uh, and simply just Googling your favorite brands and then searching for their distributors, writing it down like a sort of email list. Uh, and then, you know, potentially next steps, get a nice little Wix website or basic website, but like a business email. Uh, get a good template, you know, think of something that's professional that makes you and, you know, go through that email list and just start, uh, you know, sending these, these uh, emails across, these sales emails across. Um, why not? Just ask for price lists. Maybe don't even ask for, a, for an account form, just sort of say, could I get a price list? I'm interested and then uh, get the feel for it. Uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's just a numbers game, really. Um, you know, I think it's for every sort of 10 wholesalers, you know, for, for us, it's probably eight get accepted, really. Uh, you get the odd one who doesn't like, 
who works with Amazon themselves, but majority want to work with you and they want to do business. So just send those emails out, um, start with emails. You don't even have to call them for, for the stars. Um, you can obviously under, have them a template. If they don't reply back, give them a call. Um, but yeah, just have the basics of like, like what's, why would they sell to you? Like you're, you're a business, you're reliable. So, you know, get that sort of, yeah, that's, that's it really. Yeah. I love, yeah. Yeah, I love that. I mean, it's in, in many ways, um, uh, what's the, what's the, the, the sort of uh, saying here? Um, you know, success in our business in, in many ways is simple. It's not easy, but it is simple. And therefore, if somebody's, um, I, I know this is what I personally do as well, Johnny. I, I always try to just think of what, what's the next, the next one step. I, I don't try to sort of complicate it in terms of like, uh, if, if, if I would have thought to myself back in 2015, that in 2022, I'm going to be in a warehouse, 10,000 square foot, staff walking around it would be too overwhelming too complicated i'm like how was this gonna work i just think about that next step so what you've just said there is just have a a simple process of a google sheet try collecting as many emails of suppliers that you could possibly find online google you name it and just start firing off email saying i'm interested in an account and then just that would be the first step to get that dialogue Oh, hundred percent. That's all it is really. And, you know, I've now sort of set that process up with my sort of admin VAs now. So um, apart from the occasional call from someone saying, oh, hi, I've got your account application. I'm like, okay, um, sorry, who you call, where are you calling from? Because I don't have anything to do with it now, but I've actually set up that system where the only thing I'm really a part of is when I need to pick up the phone. Uh, you know, we're sort of a business of 10, but I haven't got any salespeople. So I'm still the, the voice of the business, but yeah, if you can set up quickly, it's a simple template, really. Just and play around with it, A, B, test it, or whatever, uh, and see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, what, one of the things that um, I know uh, I've had many conversations about is like um, when you get stock lists, and I'm sure you've experienced this as well, you'll get stock lists, and these stock lists might have thousands upon thousands of lines. Um, do you have any sort of recommendations on how you've over time learned how to make this process quicker in, or do you have a, your team um, sort of just go through think one at a time? Uh, what, what would you currently do to try to make this process as quick as possible? Yeah. I mean, funnily enough, we don't have, um, you know, where we put the barcodes in and uh, the, the, that sort of software wholesale inspector software. Um, we're thinking about building ourselves, but uh, at the moment we don't use it. We rather just sort of manually do it. And uh, my best suggestion really is to, uh, you know, sort, sort it by A to Z. And then rather than looking at the individual listing, look at the brand. So just search the brand into Amazon and just see our Amazon on the listing, you know, how many FBA sellers are on it. Does the pricing look good? And just get a general feel of what is a brand, uh, you know, Amazon friendly brand that you can sell on, right? And then just sort of, you know, if it's 10,000, just get all the brands, right? And then look on the brand basis and then sort of narrow it down. I mean, you can use Keeper, Smart Scout, lots of different things where you can just search the brand, uh, filter off Amazon and just see, well, what are Amazon retail not selling on? And then when you have the good brands, then go back and, and, and see. And if you find a good listing, the other thing to think about as well, you know, if they do have 10,000 of lines, um, I bet they're probably buying from other wholesalers. So what does, what does that mean? That means that, um, you know, that listing of two, three other FBA sellers on that listing, you can probably get it from a better price from somewhere else, right? Because this wholesaler is probably buying from another wholesaler or direct or whatever it is. So, you know, if you find a good listing, don't put it to the side, do some more research, try and find some more distributors, right? Because some wholesalers just are basically just, sort of a third middleman, really. They just sort of sell from other wholesalers. And that's why they have 10,000 different listings because they're not, they haven't got a focus. Um, but yeah, concentrate on the brands, concentrate on like what's the, the, the friendly, sort of Amazon friendly brands. Yeah. Yeah. And um, um, in your time, do you, I mean, I know you mentioned there about um, it's a numbers game and uh, the likelihood you said about eight out of 10, you would get accounts opened um, yeah. Is there any sort of restrictions that you've come across of what 
suppliers may have said, you, you need your own warehouse or you need a, we a website or um, is, is, do they say anything about what, like Amazon FBA and you, we don't sell to Amazon sellers? Um, is, has there been any type of common things that you've, you've found and, and how have you overcome them? Yeah, so I mean, like very occasionally they'd say, uh, where are you selling? And we would say, basically, given up all my sort of, sort of secrets here, not really much of a secret, but, you know, we say we're sort of a multi-channel fulfillment center. And, you know, we're, we're fortunate. We have a Shopify website, which does is legitimate. You know, we do, I think we're doing 500 pounds of sales and just Shopify alone. So we are actually a, a Shopify store now, a uh, legitimate oh, wow. one. But I would always say, like, by the way, we sell on eBay and Amazon. However, if there is a crossover, you know, as in a crossover, like, you know, we're not competing with you, uh, then we're happy just to sell on, you know, either eBay or, or, or Shopify. Um, what I've noticed really is when you get those trade lists, if you look through the, all the brands, sometimes it'd be like four or five brands and you'll go on Amazon page and you'll see sold by Amazon, sold by Amazon, sold by Amazon, sold by Amazon. And what that basically means is that this wholesaler is doing Vendor Central and this uh, this wholesaler is working direct with Amazon. And that's where you want to like not buy for Amazon. Um, so yeah, just look at a general, you get a general feel from the brands and is Amazon on, is Amazon retail on it? If, if they are, then I bet they're working direct with Amazon and they probably wouldn't want to sell to you to sell on Amazon as well. Um, but yeah, I, be, I think be transparent and there's no, there's, I haven't had a, um, maybe because my business address, it says units, unit, you know, it says unit and pop, you know, a business sort of address. So maybe I don't get that question. They've already checked. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, f fantastic. I mean, there's there's a lot of food for thought there just for somebody just getting started or even uh, trying to find the next uh, supplier there. So I very much appreciate that, Johnny. Um, the the next thing I just wanted to, to touch on is is the transition that you made into the warehouse because yeah. I think it's um I as you will already know I I love everything to do with warehouses. I am a big advocate of. Uh, warehouse work I, I actually love it like I love the the cold winters and I love the 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 hot summers and um you know we said that we uh, we call you here one of our warehouse legends because um it was a great privilege for us just to uh, support you in that transition period and um uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that journey what it took for you to find the warehouse, what you was looking for, um, at what point, you know, at what point you'd scaled your business substantially to, to make that transition. And uh, one of the things that I always say as well is moving into a warehouse, um, you have to really think long and hard in terms of, is this something that you really want to do? Because mm -hmm. warehouse work um, is, is difficult, Sometimes it's, it's, it can seem a bit more glamorous uh, on the outside than it is on the inside, as much as I love it. Um, so do you want to share a little bit about your whole experiences there and um, uh, what was that like for you? I mean, Kev, I, that's, there's so much to, to, to break down. Uh, I, guess, I guess I'll start just with the, the first bit and like what you're looking for, like right? what, where. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, so, there's so many different parts to warehousing. It's insane. Um, but uh, if you are looking for a warehouse, then uh, for me, just, just you know, you have the small business rates relief, just trying to stay like under that threshold or near it, right? So that sort of size, uh, you don't want a lot of like pillars and stuff like that. You want just an empty sort of space. Uh, you don't need office space at all. Um, any, all the sort of supervisors and managers I've worked with, they're just, they want to be on the shop floor, right? They don't want to be in an office. For you, it's different because you have a service space, warehouse you need that those offices because you're your customer you work with customers um so it's different for yourselves but for someone who's just operating as a sort of reseller uh yeah as, as an empty space um you know yeah that's that's how i would think about sort of acquiring it uh you know we had to sort of relocate uh, so i mean i can go on for, for a long time about when and why and stuff like that um but yeah, where, where would you want me to start on that, Cash? Uh, uh, yeah, I, just just really, um, what's been maybe uh, your? You've been in the warehouse now for coming up like a year. July, it's July, end of July last year. 
end of July. So you, you know, it's nearly twelve months in now, uh, which is amazing. That, what it's crazy? Do you remember what you felt like when you first moved in and you was like you was walking in for the first time? Uh, must have been such a a milestone moment, which you should be super proud of. Oh, thank you. Uh, it, it feels great. You know, you walk into this big sort of 3,000 square foot. I mean, it's not big, but, you know, big in comparison to like a house, right? And it's just got all this empty space. But, you know, you've got to, you've got to fill that empty space and get those uh, orders, you know, get those orders in and be able to send all the stock infantry to, to Amazon. But um, it's, it's, um, it does quickly turn into a, a hell of a lot of work. And I think... Uh, one thing I have learned and one thing I would recommend if you are going to a warehouse space is, and I, I spoke to Matthew right uh, a few weeks ago, is like, I don't think entrepreneurs, well, I don't, I, I'm personally, and me and his experiences, we don't make good business managers. We're, we're creators. So I, what I learned about myself is I don't want to be in there micromanaging, you know, younger staff and saying, you know, get off your phone, stop doing TikTok, you know, what are you doing? Like, why are you just standing about sort of thing? You don't have time as an entrepreneur really to micromanage because you won't grow your business. So the one thing that I would say, if you're going to go to a warehouse is can my business afford a warehouse manager or a warehouse supervisor? Uh, I think that's very important because you know, at the end of the day, you need to, you need to run the business on the back end and you want to be an entrepreneur and be the creator. You don't want to be the, the operator inside the business. Um, I think that's as one thing to, to learn. And, and the other thing is like, say to yourself, are you uh, maybe on the other side is you want to be the warehouse manager and, you know, outsource all the purchasing and stuff like that. And you need to think to yourself, like, am I a good business manager? Am I happy to be in that one location for the next seven years? Right. As a, as a, as a manager. Um, so there's, there's a lot of things, right. And, I think the, the preps on the model is so, so attractive to, I would say, 99% of people because if you if you want to travel, you want to be flexible. You can't really be that flexible, especially for the first year in a warehouse. Just know you're going to be in that warehouse for probably 16 hours a day, right? Because you're going to be eight hours managing staff and then you're going to be eight hours working on the business. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. Um, I can sort of you know, expand on all those sort of things. I think, and, uh... you, I think you just hit a really, really uh, such a valuable point um, when you was talking about a, a lot of the times uh, us, we, we start businesses because we are, you know, entrepreneurial. We want to uh, build a, a side business, an online business, you, whatever business model that you sort of being attracted to. And uh, a lot of the reasons for that is because you're entrepreneurial, you're, you know, visionary based ideas, creativity, you want to build. Um, but what can happen very quickly as the as you start building, you then got to manage what you are building. So that starts to split you up into two. And I think what it's definitely one of the biggest recommendations that I would personally uh, have as well is know where you want to position yourself in the business. Yeah. And um and, and hire and build teams and systemize around where you see yourself. So for me, I've always been the one that I, I love systemizing the business, making things easier for the team. Uh, how can we learn from this error, mistake to, to prevent it happening again? Uh, building great relationships with, you know, fantastic people in the community and our partners, et cetera. Um, that's where I like to be. Hmm. Maybe not so much the the day to day operational, but some people love doing that, and it's a, it's about knowing where you want to be. You know, Kev, I think me and you are pretty much exactly the same. There, I love to to be the creator, but I don't want to actually have to, um, you know, be the operator. I don't want to put that into place. I don't want to have to. I kind of I don't know. Why I can't remember the word, but you know, I want to be the creative and say this is how we do it. But I don't actually want to be the person who's doing it. Right. Um, if someone says to me, like, you know, I'm checking in stock too, it's just taking too long. I want to be the creator and be like, why don't we just build this sort of app or how do we can make this improvement here? And I want to sort of pull levers and think of ideas. And uh, fortunately, I've got to that stage, but it's come at, uh, it comes at a big cost, to be honest, like, because you have to pay for, uh, you know, warehouse manager. And I remember when you first told me about moving to a warehouse, you'll start with a few bit packers, but then you'll start to split the team up. So you'll have different, you'll have an inbound, outbound team, and you have a pick pack team, and you have management. We're finally getting to that stage now where we have that sort of hierarchy. Um, 
but yeah, what I was trying to say is like, you know, you want to be at the very top and sort of um, for me as a creative, as an entrepreneur, and, you know, you want to be the puppet master, don't you? Sort of, you don't want to actually have to be the puppet doing the show, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Um, so <laughs> what, what would you say is, um, uh, I just want to quickly touch a little bit on team building and, um, you know, cultivating your team. Um you know, you've you've you mentioned there you've got now ten warehouse staff, which is outstanding. Oh, sorry, Kev. No, I have I have six, six, and then six, four six, but... four VAs. Uh, one, no, three VAs and one software developer. So ten on the team, four in the back, six in the warehouse. Oh, yeah. that's that's awesome. Uh, apologies for that. Um, right. So you you've got a, a great team of ten now. Um, what what's um, what would you say has been maybe some of the things that you've learned there about just managing? teams and building teams because i know that um many people that watch this uh, they've they've maybe got one or two team members or virtual assistants that they they're really starting to mature their businesses or, or some people maybe watching this that are looking to hire that first person uh, what would you say has been your general experience building the team and some of the things that may have worked and some of the things may not have worked yeah, sure. So a hell of a lot has, has, has not really ended up working. Uh, out of the original four people who are pick and packers, we had to get rid of three of them. Right? So, I mean, it's maybe some we used agencies and stuff to get them originally and then referrals. Um, so what we're doing and one of the issues we had was we had a very young team. So it would be me and then four operatives who are all very young. And what happens is when you have a bunch of 18, 20 year olds and no maturity in the team is that you get a lot of people just, you know, naturally they're going to like be more playful and mess around and not concentrate as much. So for me, I, I mean, like with team building, I think for the warehouse team is bringing in maturity, uh, bringing in old, older people. Um, when you're younger, you know, you live with your parents usually. Uh, you don't need that roof of your head. You don't have to pay for those mortgage bills. So I think bringing that maturity added that, I don't know, that really good culture of like people working hard. And uh, for some reason, the younger girls just didn't really care about our incentive programs. But when an older person came in, you know, they wanted that extra sort of, you know, 60, 70 quid a week, uh, sorry, every two weeks. Um, Cause you know, that's going to help them sort of their mortgage and, you know, help them buy their, their kids some new toys and stuff. But for younger people, and that's all I had at the beginning, um, it was very hard to incentivize them. And it was hard. It was, it, I found it very hard to market manage them and, and run the business. Um, and, you know, you're, you're managing uh, warehouse operatives and, uh, you know, some of them, um, you know, some of them coming, I don't know, I don't know what would be mean, but like, you know, um, you know, they're not Harvard business people, right? They're, they're, they're working in as, as they're, they're uh, you know, they're coming straight from school Um a lot younger it's a different way i speak to my fellow like, other like, entrepreneurial friends and stuff like that it's just a different way of speaking to people so it's uh people from different backgrounds and different sort of ed educational points and you're you have to sort of speak and, and manage people and it's a really there's a there's, a, there's an art to it and it's something i'm not good at and my manager is fantastic at so <laughs> um bringing the manager and it, it, it's crazy how much um difference he's made it's uh, ridiculous yeah. yeah, which is which is a you you know this that's such a great point because I've never looked at it myself from in, in my business perspective. I've never never looked at it from this point of view, but um, it makes total sense because I um, I have experienced many different experiences. We'll call it that way. Some not so good, um, but uh, we've most definitely got such a, a great team and a great. Uh, work ethic um, that we've built over the years. And now you just mentioned that it's, we've got such a diverse team. We have, yeah. uh, we do have younger members of the team, but we also have older members of the team. We also have, we have some members of the team that are, uh, that don't have like young children and families, but we also have very family orientated uh, members of the team. We have, um, men and and women um we've even got different religions at this point as well now so it's a, such a diverse team and it can be they they influence each other so like you just mentioned there if you've just got like one set of people if you like that it's only going to be one way if, if you know what i mean um sure. 
So yeah, that's that's such a great one there, Johnny. Uh, that's such a good one. Um, yeah, you have to think with sort of younger people, eighteen, sort of twenty-one. They're more. Um, I'm generalizing a little bit. They're more um, impressionable, you know. And, and if someone else is messing around, they're more likely to mess around, you know. Especially during like seasonal stuff, and if someone's dancing, like singing the Christmas songs, yeah, the other person can start dancing. But you just if you have that mix, you just have that maturity, and just you have that person who's eager to you know, that drive to, to, you know, pay their bills and, and you know, it's um, it made the, uh, the biggest difference in our warehouse. And yeah, it's, it's, I think that's one of the biggest points I can make is, um, you know, the way people look at it is like, you know, I'm going to get younger staff and, you know, I'm going to pay a little bit less because you don't have to pay them as much as the adults. But however, you'll get a lot more output by hiring adults and then have that combination of the younger staff and then being driven and being motivated by the old people. Um, that's just the way it's worth for yeah. us. Yeah. And definitely um, and definitely having a, a list of clear accountability, you know, oh, yeah. know, knowing what the role actually is, what they're responsible for. I know that's been something that's been super, super, uh, it's been a big lesson for me personally. A lot of the times, you know, in your own mind, how you want somebody to work, but they're not, people aren't mind readers. You've got to be able to transfer your instructions and expectations or targets into some way that you can communicate that with somebody else. So then they, they're clear on what uh, is expected of them. I'm sure that yeah. you've probably done a lot of that as well, right? Definitely. And this is another thing, actually. It's like, it's funny. It's like the, the pick and pack team are like the sales team. You know, they're the one making the sort of incentive sort of bonus on the operatives. So everyone around them. So we have a stock controller and the warehouse manager they're almost like the support team yeah so we don't want the pick packers really to, to move infantry around really we just want them to focus on pick packing your job is to get as much out the door as accurately as possible um at the start because that one person was doing a bunch of different things i guess that can work sometimes but you know now they have a really set defined goal you know they have very set uh you know a, a set target on their, their bonus incentive so they get five ten percent every two weeks uh and they know exactly my, my my role here is pit pack you know i don't have to get that infantry here to to send to amazon because the stock controller should be bringing that infantry all the way there they don't have to do a stock check because all the infantry on the on the on the shelf should be exactly where they are so they know and they'll know i don't have to do that you know they're basically like Hey Mark, can you can you go grab this for me? You know, and come support me because I want to hit this bonus. You know, yeah. so that's 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 exactly right. You, that yeah. defined roles. Yeah, love it. Um, one one other topic to just to discuss a little bit more about before we uh, talk about what like what what is the vision for you, Johnny? Is um, to do with productivity and time management. Um, because obviously you're very, very busy. You've mentioned you've got, yes, you've got your, you've got your warehouse, but you've also got property. Um, I know you've got your Facebook group and you've got your community. There's lots of things that you're doing. Um, in your sort of the last 10, 15 years worth of experience, what's, what's been maybe some of the, the best things that's worked for you in terms of time management, how you manage yourself to be as productive as possible? Right. For, for me, I, I think I, I have a different personality type and I have this sort of hyper obsessive personality type where for me, it was finding that something that I really loved and I found really, that could drive me, that really pushed me to the next step where I was, you know, obsessed. I think in terms of time management for me and the way I think as being an entrepreneur now, it's like, I, it's, it's funny, but uh, I'd always think to myself, how do I not do this job? Every time I'm, I'm doing something, I'm like, why have I scheduled? Of course, you've got to do meetings and talking to your staff and stuff like that. So, you know, you set that in the morning and then the rest can be um, wherever you like. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of productivity, there's a few things that actually work for me um, on a sort of more structured sort of thing. And uh, I like listening to this guy called Lex Friedman. He's, he's an interesting podcaster. Um, and I like doing, I like kind of, I'm trying to break up my day more now. Uh, it's basically at the moment, I'll do like four hours in the morning, which would be like meetings and sort of hard work. Then I always take a break, go for a run, do something like that. And I'll do another four hours. Then I'll have dinner and then I'll do another four hours of sort of light work. Um, so I think breaking up your day and structuring it is very important, especially um, we're actually planning on going on the road for, for a month or so um, in, in, in July. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, me and my partner have said like, you know, we need to actually have a, a schedule so we're not just sitting in the flat in the middle of sort of Portugal, just 
we need to actually structure it so we can actually do things um so i don't know whatever really works for you i think productivity really for me is just finding stuff you enjoy as an entrepreneur it's just thinking how do i not do this job i don't want to do so it's hiring and thinking of systems and processes or automations to not do that job um and then it's just sort of being like forcing yourself to take a break i think is, is helpful as well um yeah i, I you know i've got a hyper obsession uh, kev so like i i love uh, amazon i love coding i love systems so it's hard to pull me away my my problem is you have to pull me away from some some things sometimes yeah which yeah. um it, it, to, to me uh, when it comes to from a productivity point of view i've always it, it's very subjective based on the individual not there's not one size fits all and and if anything um to, to me especially when i first got started young family full-time job to, to me it was all about trying to just make messy progress that's the best way i can just try to describe it like um one i absolutely agree if you love what you're doing there there it doesn't feel like work you'll you don't have to pull yourself out of bed or anything you 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 just love what you're doing that definitely helps but then and another thing that's to me has been really important is not to be too rigid in terms of like knowing every single moment of the day where you should be what you should be doing and 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 having that pressure on you like um between this time and this time you should be doing this and then this time and this time should be doing that to me it's all been about like what is as a as an overview what my outcomes for the day and if if that gets yes i'll plan like okay i'm doing that in the morning and i want to do that in the afternoon but it's i also realize that i've got a team to support i've got a family life i've got lots of other things that needs to be done so it's about just making as much messy progress as possible over a long period of time and then you can only move forward at that point so um, definitely, uh, I would agree with you on that. I, th- I, th- I think a good analogy is um, is going to the gym, and uh, for myself, uh, and what you said about the tap, uh, sort of following on about being, about goals is if you go to the gym and you just go do some weights and you don't track it, you know, go do some machines, don't track it, and then you just sort of don't really know what you actually achieved in that session. Uh, then you come back for the next day and you sort of go do stuff and like non like I don't know what, you know, just lifting random weights if you're not tracking it. However, in, in, if you're in the gym, you go on the program uh, and you set goals every week. Okay. I'm, I'm going to do 5k gym more on the bench press, or I'm going to do one more rep this week. And every week you have those goals of like how to improve and uh, having those sort of goals and monthly goals. You know, I want to hit that hundred kg bench in, uh, you know, in two, three months, I think, being goal orientated will definitely help with product uh, productivity because you have a goal in sight, you have an end goal in sight. So I think that gym things makes sense. And I think anyone who's going to the gym actually is good advice. It's just make sure you have a program. Um, it really does help because then you have something to aim for every time you go to the gym, you're not just going, you don't feel like you're not going for a reason. So I hundred percent agree that I think yeah, having you've got, goals. You've got to have, uh, because you've, you've got to try building that momentum and yeah. the, the, you, you, you only know whether you're in momentum if you've if you've got some type of target or goal that you're working towards. Um, so for me, I remember the first couple of months, I would be like working as much as I possibly could. And I'd, and I'd go to bed that night thinking to myself, I haven't achieved as much as I wanted to do today, but I might have actually achieved like 15 things. But because I'd never really been aware of it or wasn't tracking it, I always kind of felt a little bit like, oh, tomorrow I need to do more I need to do more so just having some type of tracking knowing what you're trying to achieve planning a bit of organization I think that's sort of the general but um just to yeah. come towards the 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 end of this thing Johnny um you you mentioned at the start you you know you've got a fantastic business uh you've got a great team uh seven figure Amazon business you've expanded out to to Shopify you've got that off the ground you've got some sales going uh, what what is the what's what's happening now then, Johnny? What's what is the target? What is the goal? What are you building? Christ, it's it's, it's one of those things, right? Where uh, you know my big goal when I moved to the warehouse, funnily enough, was not to be in the warehouse, which is funny. It's a funny goal, right? It's just like how do I not be there? <laughs> which I've achieved because you can see I'm not I'm not in a warehouse. I'm in my in my, my in my living room. Um, so that was my goal. So. Um, 
you know, where do you set goals off that? Right. Right now I have a new obsession of building my, my Shopify store. And, um, you know, we hit the top 500 Amazon sellers in the UK. You know, I know it's, it's a numbers thing, but we want to hit the top 100 Amazon sellers. Um, you know, we have that goal of Shopify. I want to, I want a seven figure Shopify store. You know, we're way, 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 way off now. Um, for me, it's, I guess it's numbers. I know, I don't know if that's an ego thing, but you know, it's, it's also just making sure my team, um, can fully get on um, with their work. And I think like a sort of overall goal for me, is just so, you know, if I go on a, go into a coma for, for three months and I come out of that coma in three months time, has the business stayed the same? Was it grown or has it gone down as it, as it fell apart? Uh, I think my goal and my, my constant goal is, um, is can the business grow without me, right? It's, it's, it's against that point where I don't have to be here. I can go to Thailand for, for a year, not turn on my, Go on it, go on the internet, and when I come back, the, the revenues increased. So I think that's a nice little goal. How do I systemize this process, everything in the business? So you know, it it, it just keeps growing. Um, and you know, I, I'm always got little goals where it's like, how do I not do this? And I keep going on about this. It's, it's a really important thing as an entrepreneur. Is like if you're doing a task or anything like that. You just think to yourself, well, how do I not do this? Or how do I improve this? How do I use, how do I automate this? How do I, you know, delegate this? And um, I think we're covering this before. If someone comes to me as a, with a question, like why are they come to that question? How they're not answer again? Um, you know, how do I, and it's also other things, but how do I speed up this process? How do I get efficiencies and stuff like that? So it's, it's a bunch of mini goals. And then there's the overall goal of, you know, I want to get to, you know, and it's like the question of like, uh, you want to reach those numbers and it's always that why for myself. And I don't know. It's, it's, it's a, it's a but you lo- you're it. loving what you're doing, Johnny. You, you're loving yeah. what you're doing. And, um, you know, the, the, I, I think it's, um, it's an amazing thing that you, you're doing and that you continue to do. I think for every business owner, um, if that's what you want to do, is uh, it's, you, you want the business to be able to run and hopefully grow without you. And I think, especially when you've now got warehouse teams, you've got staff, you, your business is a lot more, it got a lot more responsibility, et cetera. I think, I think that wants to be the, the, the goal for hopefully any business owner, um, just think it, cause you never know. Like for me, I'm, I'm building a business for, to outlive me. Like that's, that's, that's the goal. I mean, I'm in this for like, the marathon, the the whole life's marathon, and yeah. um, but life can for what we don't know. We don't know when the end of life is. So it's super important. I know for me personally, and it's not really trying to be morbid here. It's just I'm always like, why am I the only person that does this? I need to delegate, and I need to empower. I need to give. I need to or build or have some type of plan to get to that point because you know not everybody can do where you know warehouse or warehouse manager or whatever straight away and it's a it's a stepping mm-hmm. stone but i think that's just something that you've got to keep working on um but yeah thank you so much for your time today johnny i just wanted just to say here publicly on behalf not just myself but i know i mentioned to the team and, and kylie and siobhan etc um you know they just wanted to say uh, it's great to to hear that you're doing so well um they wish you all the best and all the luck um, and you'll continue to keep smashing your business, which is amazing. And, you know, for me, I'm, I really, really enjoyed the time that we had together, especially I love talking about warehouses so when you was talking about warehouses. So I just wanted to say thank you very much for that. Um, and where can people find you, Johnny? Where can people find you online if they wanted to reach out, uh, get conversations started? Oh, thanks, Kev. I hope, you know, you and the, uh, all the girls and the team, I do, I'm doing well, you know, I do, I do miss some of being to, you know, Kaylee and Siobhan and, you know, Kylie. So uh, it's been a while since I've uh, chatted, but I hope they're doing well. Well, at the moment, so we have an Amazon group, uh, sorry, a Facebook group called Amazon Entrepreneurs. Um, yeah, join in. I, I talk a lot about systems and I'm sort of at the moment, I'm sort of giving weekly updates on my Shopify store and sort of, I'm going to show you how I reach it to the next steps, hopefully. And uh yeah, to come join the, the Facebook group and, and get involved. Uh, yeah. 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 And I will have uh, all the links uh, down below in the description. Uh, you can join his group um, if you want to learn more about systems, 
Amazon FBA, Shopify now, which is amazing. So um, if you have got to this point, please um, please give it a big thumbs up. Really, really appreciate it. If you've got any comments or any questions or any observations at all of what, uh, what we've spoken about, please don't hesitate to comment down below um as always please uh consider hitting that subscribe button and uh yeah once again thank you so much to, to johnny for being here cannot wait to see uh the future uh what you're up to and um yeah have a have a great day and uh look forward to seeing you again in the future johnny on the channel thanks for having me kev that was fun i enjoyed it cheers